So we made the grandma pie in episode one of this grandma pizza series. The whole entire dough recipe, and it's for a 24 ounce dough ball. That is all in the description, and that's all in the first video here. I'm gonna make a bunch of these videos, so I don't wanna keep starting over showing you how to make the dough. It has yeast, salt, sugar, flour, water, and a little bit of olive oil in it. So we're gonna make a spicy vodka sauce grandma pizza today. I have the dough right here and it's been in the fridge for 24 hours. So we had a 24 hour cold fermentation. Ideally 48 hours would be better, even 72, you get more flavor from there. It's been out for about 30 minutes. We're not gonna be able to stretch it in the pan all the way yet. And that's fine. Let's put some oil in the pan and like a hefty amount of oil, just like we did last time. You'll see videos of places making it and they'll have an oil can next to them and they're using a ton of oil for it. So that is probably one of the most distinctive things about a grandma pizza is how much olive oil is used and how the bottom gets almost a, a crunchy crispiness to it. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and gonna rub the oil in, try to just get it everywhere. What's, what's gonna happen is as we stretch the dough, it's gonna tend to move the oil, gonna puddle the oil in some spots. What we can do is before we make the pizza, you can lift up each corner of it and squeeze a little bit more oil. And here's the 24 ounce massive dough. It's cold, it's not gonna stretch that much right now. I'm gonna just try to use gravity. All right, so we're gonna try to, with our fingers, try to push it push it out a little bit. But what's gonna happen is because it's cold, it's just gonna come right back together. Normally this takes about two to three times to get the full stretch, to get it all the way into the corners. Do the best you can right now, maybe a couple minutes worth, but there's no way you're gonna be able to get it spread out completely. We're gonna let time do the work. And we're gonna take plastic wrap, put it on top, and we're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna be able to prepare our vodka sauce during that time. Okay, just put this over to the side. Now, I made two vodka sauce recipes already on this channel. We did originally rigatoni with regular vodka sauce, then we did a spicy vodka sauce pasta with spinach. So that one used Calabria and chili paste. So that one was a little different than the first one. This one's gonna be a little different too, because in both of those recipes, I used tomato paste, but in this one, I'm gonna use tomatoes. Now you can use whole plum tomatoes or you can use crushed tomatoes. This is Sclafani, they're a good brand. It's normally it's about $1.49 to $1.99 a can for this. I want this sauce to be a little bit looser than how thick it normally is for the pasta. I'm gonna do three cloves of garlic minced and about a half a cup of onion minced. Not too much onion, not too much garlic. And take about a half the can of this. So this is a 28 ounce can. This will be 14 ounces you take. And that's pretty much all the ingredients prepped for the vodka sauce. We'll make it in a second. And vodka sauce does not take a long time to make at all. Let's give this one more stretch. Okay, it's warmed up for about 20 minutes. Don't be afraid just to grab it and just pull it to the sides like this. Now it looks like when you're stretching it that you don't have enough dough to fill it, but you will as the dough gets warmer. And when you stretch the dough, it'll warm up quick. That's almost there. I'm gonna cover it one more time. We'll make the sauce and then, and then we'll be good. But definitely keep covering it so it doesn't get dry. If you're using a stainless steel pan, let it heat up for about two minutes. A little bit of olive oil. All right, put the onions in, let them sweat for a few minutes, and then put the garlic in. You don't want to get any color on these onions. Keep the heat extremely low. The onions been in there for about three minutes. Put the garlic in for maybe a minute or two. 
All right, and once that garlic gets a little golden, just a tiny bit because it was minced pretty finely, put the vodka and the white wine in there. You turn the heat up to about medium high right now. Two ounces of vodka. And two ounces of dry white wine, such as Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay. I'm gonna let the alcohol cook out for about a minute or two. I forgot, if you wanted hot pepper, you could put hot pepper in earlier with the onions and garlic sauteing, but it doesn't matter if you put it in now. And I'm putting about a teaspoon because I want this to be spicy. If you make mistakes or whatever, normally you're gonna be okay if you don't do things in the right order. There's certain things that you, you could screw up, but for the most part, you'll be you'll be all right. TikToks, you know, people on there on that platform, they're young, so they might be cooking for the first time. And this person said, you didn't put the pepper in in the right time. If the, the dish is ruined, and I said, it's really not, <laughs> you know? Okay, so most of the alcohol's evaporated. Let's add the tomatoes in. And you can bring this, you know, the heat back down to about medium. The Scofani crushed are very thick. You can see how thick these are. It's not a typical crushed tomato. They're good for pizza sauce for, for like a regular New York round pie. I'm gonna let this cook out for about five minutes and then we'll add the cream. I turn the heat to about basically medium low, and put the cream in. Bring this all to a simmer and we have way too much sauce, I can tell. So you got leftovers and that's the best thing. So it's thickened up a little bit. There it is, looking good. Now, you can turn it off completely. Do a little taste test. I already did a little, do a little bit more. All right, I'm back. I thought I got something on my shirt. <laughs> I can't have that. Mix that in, give it a taste. If it tastes acceptable to you, and this tastes delicious right now, it's just a, it's really spicy, just a really good spicy vodka sauce. Put this off to the side, let it cool for a bit, and let's get back to that dough. So with clean hands, you should be able to definitely move it into position now. Now, I just wanna let you know, the corners right here, like these corners, if you're not completely perfect on them, you'll have a chance because we're using mozzarella slices, they can kind of weigh down the corners. You can buy sliced, and I do recommend you do that, but if you don't and you buy, say like a two pound brick of Palio or Costco sells Palio bricks, uh, BJ's sells Galbani bricks. If you freeze them for about 45 minutes, it's far easier to get thinner slices. So for the recipe, I have 12 ounces of mozzarella, but it's not really about the weight. It's more about, can you cover the whole pizza? So the thinner you slice it, you'll be able to cover it. If you slice it really thick, you might have more than 12 ounces. You see how easily now it's covering up the whole thing? In the beginning, it was a little mass and you just couldn't move it. Now we can move it completely to where to where we want it. It's because it's warm. I like to pull the corners a little bit because they're gonna come back in. If you think you don't have enough oil at the bottom, what you can do is you can peel back one of the edges. It looks like there's a lot of oil there. So that looks okay. And then you could just put it right back where it goes. But if you don't think you have enough oil, make sure you get you get it under there. I've used about four or five different packaged sliced mozzarellas and they've all been good. There is a difference between whole milk and low moisture. So this is sliced low moisture. There's gonna be a lot less wetness that comes out and I think it's better for this. You can use whole milk too. So we wanna just get over the edge. So kind of like we're laying shingles. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be, I'm almost done. And I just cut a little bit to uh, fit, fit it. Make sure you have your oven set to 450 degrees and have your oven rack at the lowest point. That's where we're gonna cook it. All right, so we have our pizza all ready to go. We have our shingled mozzarella and here is the vodka sauce. So typically they'll, places like King Umberto's will do it random. A lot of places will do stripes diagonal stripes. I'm gonna do a diagonal stripe for this vodka sauce. So I'm just gonna go basically 45 degrees.
Now your first inclination is gonna to be to use way more sauce than that, but this is a lot of sauce right here. So you can maybe use a tiny bit more, but it's gonna spread out. It's going to get most of it. If you wanna do this, this is completely optional. How we did on the original grandma, the traditional grandma, we used garlic oil. So this is minced garlic and olive oil, just regular olive oil. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit on the top because grandma pies are very oily. It's that delicious olive oil taste that makes it that unique grandma flavor. All right, so we're gonna do eight minutes exactly. Maybe just, you gotta keep an eye on this. My 450 degree oven might not be yours. So when I say this is gonna be a total cooking time of roughly 19 to 20 minutes, you might be at 17 or you might be at 22 or 23. This is for a non-convection oven the way I'm cooking this. If you're using a convection oven, you need to subtract 25 degrees. All right, so that looks really good, right? Now, the bottom's a little brown too, and I wanna tell you guys this, <clears throat> just so you know, so it's still good, very, very crispy. Let me see that. Ultra crispy, really good. Might need to back off, maybe even lower the heat, maybe a little bit. We're gonna get this back in the oven for maybe one more minute and we're gonna finish with about a quarter cup of fresh basil. Don't put your basil on until right when you're ready to serve. I'll make this with uh, the first grandma that we made. I hope you watch the next one. So I got so many plans and we're gonna do Sicilian, we're gonna do round pies. I'll see you next time.